Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Godot tutorial series. We're going to start things off by of course downloading Godot. I have left the link in the description to the Godot download page. I am just going to go ahead and download the standard version because we are not going to use uh, C Sharp. After it is done downloading, I just opened the zip file and I will extract the exe into a folder. I will also rename the executable to just godot.exe so it doesn't have this long ugly name. I am also going to create a shortcut on the desktop. Once you open Godot, this window will pop up. This is where you will see all your projects. Right now it should be empty if you just downloaded Godot for the first time. I am going to click on the New Project button and click Browse to select another folder. Once I selected the folder, I will name my project and click on Create Folder. After I'm done, I will click Create and Edit and this window should pop up. This is the Godot editor. This is where you will make all of your games. Let's start off by explaining how nodes and scenes work in Godot. Nodes are objects that can be added to a scene. A scene can be saved, keeps multiple nodes inside it. Godot works in a tree-like hierarchy. That means that if I created a control node earlier, it will be the new root node. The root node is basically the first node or the trunk of the tree. Every node can be a parent of another node or a child of a previous node. If I click on the plus button, I can add a new node, the spatial node or a 3D node. This spatial node is now a child of the control node. Every node has a path. The control node, for example, is just control. The spatial node, however, is control slash spatial. The path to a node is how you access it and call commands or variables from another node. In order to save our scene, I will simply hit Ctrl and S at the same time. I will create a new folder and name it Scenes. You don't have to do this, but it's recommended in order to keep everything tidy. I will also rename the spatial node to Game and I will right click it and click on Save Branch as Scene. I will go into Scenes and save it. If I click on this button right here to the right of the node, it should open a new scene. You can see up here all the scenes that you have opened. I will create a new scene and click on other node. Now I will add a kinematic body, which I will rename to player. A kinematic body is a physics body that can be controlled using a function called move and slide. I will also save this scene inside the scenes folder. I will add a camera to the player and a collision shape. Make sure that when you add the collision shape you don't have the camera selected but player. I will click on the collision shape and on the right inside this menu you will see a property called shape. I will click on empty and create a new capsule shape. A capsule shape is generally what is used in video games to make the shape of a player. However you can use anything from a cylinder to a square to a triangle. Click on transform to open up the transform menu and inside the rotation degrees on X write 90. This will rotate the capsule to be upright. Next, click on the camera node and open up the transform menu again. Click on the Y axis and set it to 1. This will put the camera around the player head's position. Right now we aren't going to program any player move. I will leave that for the next episode. But I want to showcase the physics of Godot. I will go back to the game scene and clicking on game and opening down here the folder scenes, I will drag and drop player into it. Using the blue arrow I will move the player backwards. Next click on game and click on the plus button. Here I will add a static body. This is a type of physics body that is, well, static. That means that it shouldn't be moved during the game loop. Static bodies are used most of the time for the game world. Things like trees or the ground. Things that don't really move during the game. Next, I will click again on the plus sign, making sure that I have the static body node selected, and add a collision shape. With the collision shape selected, I will go to the menu on the right, click on empty in the shape parameter and add a new box shape. I will move this box shape down a bit and also change its size by dragging those little dots on the side. Next, I will add to the game node a rigid body. A rigid body is a physics body that is affected by gravity and its physics are calculated automatically by Godot. I will add a collision shape to the rigid body and add a new box shape. This time I won't change the size. I will select the rigid body and move it upwards a bit. I will also rotate it a few degrees. Next, still with the rigid body selected, I will click on the plus sign and add a mesh instance. 
A mesh instance is an object that is visible during gameplay. I will go to the right and on the mesh property I will click on empty and add a new cube mesh. As you can see this added a mesh that is in the shape of, well, a cube. Now if I run the game, as this is the first time when I run it, Godot will ask me to select a main scene. Click on select and double click on control. As you can see, the cube was affected by gravity and fell down. Now, if I select rigid body and rotate it again on a different degrees, this time not completely, when I run the game, the cube should bounce a bit. Next, I'll show you how to attach a script to a node. Scripts are what control your game. I'll go back to the player scene, select player, and click on the small white icon with a plus sign on it. This window should pop up asking you where to save your script. Click on the small file icon to the right, go back one folder, and create a new folder called scripts. This is where we'll save all our scripts. In the template option, select no comments and click create. This is what a Godot script looks like. Next, I will delete the pass keyword and instead write OS dot window full screen. You can also use the arrows and press tab to autocomplete a function or a variable equals true. The underscore ready function is called once when the node is first instanced. Instancing a node means adding it to the tree or basically adding a new branch to the tree. Now, when I run the game, you should see that the window that is being created is full screen. The final thing that I will be adding is a small rotation to the camera. Inside the player script, I will write down func underscore process. You can hit tab to autocomplete the function. The underscore process delta function is called once every frame. Inside the process function, I will write var camera equals dollar sign camera and I'll press tab. The dollar sign basically means that you are about to give a reference to a child node of the nodes that the script is attached to. In this case, the node camera is attached to player. Next, I will write camera dot rotate underscore y 0.1. This will rotate the camera on the y axis with 0.1 radians every frame. Now, if I run the game, the camera is rotating. This is a bit fast, so let's slow it down. Okay, this is it for the first episode of this series. Thanks for watching, like, comment and subscribe and all that, and I'll see you all next time. Have a good day.